When you're entering the world of artificial lighting in product photography, it can be really daunting, can be really intimidating. And I know that when I started, I was like, what is a strobe light? And what will it do for me? And I just neglected to learn more about it. I didn't understand it. So if you are in that position, like I was a couple of years ago, Watch this video, I'm gonna give you the 101 on strobe lighting. Now on a side note, if you are looking into a career in brand photography, I do have an online course called Become a Brand Photographer. And essentially this is everything that I have learned in the last three and a half years inside an online course. So it'll teach you lighting, it'll teach you styling, teach you Photoshop editing and Lightroom. It has contract templates in there, email templates, Lightroom presets, how to do a stop motion, all those things. So if you wanna check out the course curriculum, I've left a link in the description box below and you can join over 160 students who are inside the course at the moment. And don't forget to use the code YouTube if you want 10% off at checkout. So firstly, what is the difference between a continuous light and a strobe light? A continuous light, when you flick the switch, it stays on, so the light is continuous. Whereas when you have a strobe light, when it's synced with your camera, when you press the shutter button, the strobe will flash a beam of light. So when you actually look at a strobe light and it's on, it doesn't actually look like the strobe is on but it is. Now, when it comes to strobe versus continuous, a strobe light is more bright. So an issue that I used to have, an issue I see a lot of beginner photographers encounter as well, is they just say, my scene looks dull. It's not bright enough. I can't get my background to be more bright. I can't get my background to be even in lighting. Um, and you can fix a lot of this in editing. It obviously takes more time, but if you can solve this issue in production rather than post-production, well, it's going to limit your post-production time as well. So when it comes to producing high quality work, lighting is key. If you have bright light, you have good lighting, it depends on, again, the aesthetic that you're going for. But if you have good lighting, it is really going to help increase the quality of your image. Now I'm gonna tell you guys what strobe light we use and why we use this specific model. And just remember there are so many options out there when it comes to strobe lighting. It really depends on your budget, your requirements. You might need something that's battery powered so you can be more portable with it. It totally depends and I do recommend that you do your own research as well, but I'm gonna tell you what I personally love and recommend. So this one here is the Godox FV150. Now, the reason that we love this light is because it's a hybrid. It is a hybrid of continuous and strobe. So what that means is you can switch with a press of a button between strobe function and continuous function. Now, the reason that we love this light, it's really heavy. <laughs> The reason we love this light is because we do both photo and video. So often when we're out on location, we will be doing both photo and video for our clients. Now, strobe obviously doesn't work well for video. You need continuous light. So when we're on set, all we have to do is press a button to switch between a continuous and strobe function so that we can switch between photo and video really, really quickly. So this model here is about $600, so it is a little bit more expensive, but I think it is absolutely worth the investment. Now, if you don't do video, you probably wouldn't use the continuous function all that much. So you can definitely look at other options in terms of strobe lighting that is just strobe. It's not a hybrid with continuous and strobe all in one. I'm gonna show you a little behind the scenes with the strobe light in action and show you the difference between a strobe light and continuous light in the same photo. All right, so I'm just gonna show you a quick behind the scenes of how the strobe function works. So I've got my FV150 on our stand. It's currently on continuous. So I'm actually gonna take a photo first with this on continuous mode, and then we'll look at the difference. And I'm only using one light for this comparison as well. And I've got my scene set up over here. Let's do this. And now we're gonna switch this over to our strobe function. So all I have to do is press a button 
and it's now switched over to strobe. And I'm just going to amend my brightness. Make sure it's on the brightest one. Switch on my remote shutter. And we're gonna take the shot. So one of the main benefits I find of using strobe is that you can really pump up your aperture. So if you're using it on a continuous function or you're using continuous lights, which are still great, I use continuous lights for about three years of my career and I have been able to produce some amazing work. Um, but the thing that I struggled with was really upping my aperture because what you have to do if you're using continuous light if you're putting your aperture up to say five or 10 to get more in focus, uh, you're probably gonna compensate to brighten it up with your ISO. So you're gonna be most likely increasing your ISO to maybe 200, 300, 400, it depends. Um, on my Canon, when you pump up your ISO, it starts to lose quality quite quickly. It introduces more grain. Um, so any cameras are more renowned for their really good low light performance, whereas I find Canon is a little bit different. Also depends on the model of camera that you have. So what you'll notice with this scene here is depth of field. So because we've got products that are up on pedestals here, and then we've got a bit of depth uh, between these products and these products, if I shot this at 2.8 and I'm focusing on say these products, this isn't gonna be in focus. Same thing if I'm focusing on say this product here and I'm shooting at an aperture of 2.8, these products aren't gonna be in focus and the labeling will most likely be blurry. Okay, let's have a look at the difference between continuous lighting and strobe lighting. Now, these images are actually raw, straight out of camera. I haven't done any edits on these photos and I've kept all my camera settings exactly the same. All I've changed is the lighting. So you'll notice on the left, it's significantly darker. Um, I also think that the color is slightly off as well. Um, you'll notice that on the background, we have some uneven patches on that beige background. And you'll also notice on the white pedestal on the right, we're getting some blue and green hues. And that's actually from my windows. Whereas the image on the right, you'll notice that the background is really nice and even. There's probably a couple of little patches there that could be fixed, um, but definitely a lot less noticeable than the image on the left. And then you'll notice that the white pedestal to the right, while it's just, it's evenly lit, it's much more white. I can still see some bluish hues there, which I can fix in post-production. But overall, the image on the right is looking way better and you can see that I have to do less editing in post-production with the image on the right compared to the image on the left. So the main thing that I've noticed with using a strobe is that my scene is just more evenly lit and it is brighter. So that means I have to do a little bit less editing in post-production. So overall, do I recommend that you use a strobe light? Absolutely. If you have the budget and you're ready to invest in a strobe, I do highly recommend it. It will up level your work. So I hope this video has made you feel just a little less intimidated by strobe lighting, or it's just giving you the basic information that you need as to whether or not you wanna go out and buy a strobe light. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Do your research. You don't have to get the model that I recommended. There are so many other models out there, but the FV150, I'm really impressed and it works really well for us.